So welcome students. Uh, yesterday we just started with uh, the DBMS and the software that we are using is MySQL. So DBMS uh, that is uh, the in fact we are going we are learning actually the RDBMS isn't it the relational database management system and why it is called as relational database management system even that we know but we are just going to go through uh, all that again since this is just a revision that we are going to take of class 11. So RDBMS already we have gone through it and in the previous year and we have run some queries, we created tables, we have run queries, filtering and everything that we have seen. So let us understand what exactly is a data model. So a database model is a type of a data model that determines the logical structure of a database and fundamentally determines in which manner data can be stored. So basically it means that a data model, like how the tables that you create in a DBMS software in MySQL and what exactly is the structure and how the data is going to get stored, what are the data types of the field, that entire process will be called as a basically a model. So organized and manipulated, the most popular example of a database model is the relational model right that is the rdbms model that we are, are learning so basically we create tables then we you know join the tables when i say join we basically connect the two tables so all that we do so that is basically your data modeling or a data model so which uses a table based format isn't it so always we have a table based format that is in mysql we create tables we connect the tables and all that then you know connecting the tables we generate some data so that entire process will be called as a data modeling so let us move further so rdbms is what we are learning so what is rdbms a relational database is a digital database based on a relational model so when i say relational models means the tables are basically connected and so it is called as a relational model a software system used to maintain a relational databases is a, a relational database management system okay so many relational database systems have an option of using the sql so this is a language that normally we use for the rdbms software and this is the same language that mysql also uses using the structured query language we kind of uh, you know do a lot of operations on the data so for querying and maintaining the database so that is our dbms where we actually create tables we connect the tables and then from that table we generate the a final report kind of thing right so that is our dbms so understand our dbms is going to have tables tables will be having fields and the data and when i say data the data are going to be in form of records so that is the entire rdbms then an example that we just an example that i've shown over here that is a table and uh, so what is uh, the table basically this particular red thing is the fields of the table so those are the columns so these are columns and these are the rows so the columns basically they represent the attributes when i say attributes they represent the field so if you really talk about this particular table so id, ID name class and section these are the four fields of the table and if i really talk about the rows i'm not going to take the first row because that particular row is for the you know is for the fields so leaving that we going to start from here so these are the rows of the table so rows basically will represent a complete one entity that is a record of uh, one particular entity so if i talk about the first row so that is id is one name is ajay class that he belongs to is class 10 and the section that he belongs to is class is a okay that is section a and similarly we have id that is two the name is vijay class is uh, that is 11 and the section that he belongs to is the a section so basically these are rows so one row represents one complete record okay so one row will represent one record they are also called as tuples 
okay so columns are called as attributes and so technically they are called as attributes and uh, the the records that is the rows are called as tuples so that is also one of the important thing that we need to understand so let us move forward and then we have a relational model so when we talk about a relational model so basically tables are connected so over here you can see there are two tables so that is table one and the second one is a table two so table one is basically a table which maintains the student data that is the basic data like the id the name the class and the section so these are the basic information of the table okay that is a student table so i can give the name to this particular table as the student table and then there is a second table in the second table there is something unique and that is uh, id is there and then student id is there and that is something that we don't find it over here so there are two ids and then we have english maths and there can be more subjects as well now what is the unique thing of this particular table is that there are two ids one of the id okay is the basically the primary key of the table and the second id is the foreign key so we're going to understand this just in few more moments about this so these two tables are basically connected using the foreign key so what exactly is a primary key and a foreign key in just few moments we are going to understand so that was table one and table two so what we say that the tables are connected so it it becomes a relational model so our dbm is basically is a relational model itself there are going to be tables and the tables are going to get connected with each other and then using that connected tables we can generate reports so that's a relational model so then we have the terms that we use in models now these are some of the theory that we need to understand so what is a tuple as i said earlier a single row of a table which contains a single record for that relation is called a tuple so basically the first record that is the name is ajay id is 1 and the second record with the id 2 and the name is vijay so this entire thing is one tuple the entire record is one tuple so records are called as rows and tuples as well so more technically they are called as tuples okay so that was about tuples and then what exactly is an attribute an attribute is a column of a table so basically id name class and section so these are the fields of the table and every field has a that particular unit of data right so name will have all the names class is going to have all the classes sections all the sections and ids all the ids so basically a column is you know uh, that one particular part of the data you can say one particular unit of that particular uh, records you can say that okay so columns uh, are also called as attributes so what are attributes attributes basically will represent the columns of the data so these are some of the questions that can be asked during your practical exams so you should be able to answer this so attributes that is the column of the uh, table and then we are going to understand what exactly is a degree what is a degree if the question comes to you then you're going to say simple the number of attributes will represent the degree of the table so how many attributes we have we have four fields four columns and four attributes so we the degree of this particular table is four okay so the number of attributes represent the degree so what's the degree of this particular table that is four because there are four columns four attributes then let us understand what is cardinality cardinality means the number of tuples is referred as uh, this is not degree this is cardinality okay there's a mistake so the number of tuples is referred as cardinality so if we talk about number of rows basically the number of tuples which which means rows so at present there are only two rows okay i can assume that there are 10 rows so i've just given this dash out here but uh, let us assume that there are only two rows so the cardinality cardinality of this particular table is only two because there are only two uh, rows two tuples 
so that's the cardinality the number of tuples will represent as the cardinal of the table okay so this is not degree this is cardinal please understand this okay and uh, what is a view so when we generate a virtual table from two or more physical table what exactly this means children that physically means the real tables that we create using the create command so those are the actual physical table where the actual data is stored but then at times it happens that with two or more tables that are connected with each other i generate some data out of that particular tables so that will be called as a view remember in class 11 we generated a table from two uh, two physical tables so that was basically a view in fact there is something called as views also in rdbms so views are also used it is also a virtual table which means physically it does not exist but then we can create views to work on one particular uh, data of uh, the table so a table may have you know thousands of record and i am just want to work with 500 records so i can create the views for those 500 records and keep it and next time i can just uh, just work on that particular views so when i work anything that i work with the views will only affect those 500 records and not the thousand records or 10000 records so that's the advantage that we have working with views so that is about the view then what is a primary key so a primary key basically refers to one or more attributes that uniquely identif identifies a record so basically if you talk about this particular table which is a student table so which field will basically have unique numbers so basically there is no field as such so what we do is we add an id to every record so this id is something that is going to be a unique number for every record so that every record can be identified similarly if you talk about the just an example if you talk about our classroom so in classroom if i really want to identify every student so what we do we give a roll number to every student and you uh, using that roll number we can identify a student isn't it so that roll number if you talk about a classroom only a classroom so that roll number can act as a primary key if you only talk about a particular classroom okay so practically it is not possible because in a school there are many classes and every class there will be a student who have who is a roll number one or roll number two so there will be students with similar roll number so if you talk about students and school so the best primary key is the registration number so every student has a, a registration number and that will act as a primary key for the table so this is the id and this will act as a unique number for every record so that, so that every record can be uniquely identified so that is the primary key so it not it is possible that there is only one id but it is possible that we can have more than one ids or more than one attributes or more than one columns that can contribute that can be combined together to act as a primary key even that is possible so more than one field can also be the primary key can act as a primary key of a particular table okay so that is about the primary key if the question comes you have to give a very straight and clean answer so what is a candidate key now a candidate key refers to one or more attributes that can serve as a primary key so uh, you know i'm going to take an example for this so so if you really talk about uh, you know this particular table that is a student table right now there is only id that can serve as a primary key so id is a candidate key and when we make this id as a primary key then you know that candidate key becomes a primary key basically so candidates means you know all the fields of the table that are eligible to become a primary key will be called as a candidate key all the fields okay so we need to identify the fields that can serve as a primary key so over here name cannot serve as a primary key class cannot serve even section cannot serve as a primary key because sections can be similar class can be similar names can be similar so there can be duplicates only id is over here if you talk about this particular table i'm going to show you another table where we have you know multiple ids okay so all the 
all the fields which can serve or which are which are eligible to become a primary key is called as candidate key please understand this and there is something called as alternate key and after that i am going to show you the example a candidate key which is not a primary key will be called as an alternate key okay now to understand this okay let us uh, switch to this particular example now this is also one of the table i've not feed any data but there are fields like id then registration number the chassis number the engine number the model type and the color so just when you read these fields you can understand that this particular table is for a vehicle so this table can be called as a vehicle table which is going to store all the details of a vehicle so basically a vehicle will have a, we, we are anyway going to give a id for every table which will act as a primary key but other than that we can also have other fields like the uh, registration number the chassis number the engine number all this is unique to every every vehicle every vehicle has its own uh, registration number every vehicle will have its own chassis number and the engine number as well so this cannot be duplicates values so if we talk about this particular table id registration number the chassis number the engine number all four are my candidate keys so these are my candidate keys all four are eligible to become a primary key out of this i can make any one of them as my primary key so if i make id that is the user defined so that will act as my primary key so out of four id became the primary key okay and rest of the three fields that we have that were eligible to become the primary key will be called as alternate key okay so there are four candidate keys out of the four candidates id became the primary key and rest three are now called as alternate keys so these are the alternate keys that are available okay so this is how to identify the candidate key the alternate key and the primary key so primary key means any one of the candidate key you can make it as a primary key so this is the example the best example that we can have and then children uh, we are going to have understand what exactly is a foreign key now that we have understood the primary key let us understand a foreign key and this is the same example that i have taken the previous example that i showed in this slide so there are two tables and this is a this is a table that is for the student table and the second table can be considered as a table that is uh, the report table okay and i said that there is something unique about this particular table that there are two ids now this is not like there are two uh, candidate keys these are not the id the student id is not a candidate key or even an alternate key okay id is the primary key and the student id out here is my foreign key now what exactly is a foreign key foreign key using the foreign key is is what actually connects the two table so when we say that the two tables are connected with each other they are basically sharing a common primary key what does this mean is and why this is called as foreign key is because this particular student id which is 1 and 2 this particular student id is actually a primary key but of some other table so if you talk about the id of this particular table there is 1 and 2 and there is 1 and 2 over here as well so what happens is when i generate a report card why do we have this concept is because we need to you know overcome the duplicates we cannot just keep the duplicates in every table for example this is a table that is a student table so student is going to have id name class and section and this is a report table so in a report card a report where i need to generate the report cards for the students so when i generate the report cards for the students so i am going to have the details of the students like the uh, name class section date of birth and all the basic details and then the marks in the subjects so over here this is not the data that we are going to have we are going to have marks out here okay we are going to have marks out here so what is going to in fact let me just go ahead and just make the change that is this i can give something like so let us assume this is out of uh, 100 and i'm going to give 
something like 45 out here and uh, something like a 70 okay and now let me just run this particular slide so what is happening out here that uh, now we, we cannot have the basic details that is name class section in this table as well so that is of no use then the rdbms system you're not applying that concept basically so what is going to happen over here this is a report table and this is a student table where the basic data of the student is stored so what we do is that um, you know while generating the report card so we are going to take all the you know okay let us the system is going to open the uh, report table and then it is going to pick the first record and then it is going to pick the foreign key now what is the foreign key out here that is one and then it is with this particular reference it is going to access the data from the student table that is one and one will get matched and then the name class and section will be picked from this particular table and it will be printed in the report card and the marks will be taken from the report card itself so id the student id is a foreign key for the report table but this is actually a primary key of some other table since this primary key this is a primary key of some other table it is called as a foreign key so for example uh, you know there are so many foreigners that comes they they come to they go to some other country some of the foreigners they come to our country uh, so uh, if you go to some other country so you will be called as a foreigner you're not a citizen of that particular uh, country but then you will be referred as a foreigner why foreigner because uh, yes you belong to a country but some other country right so this is a primary key but of some other table and so it is called as the foreign key and using that foreign key only these two tables are actually connected with each other okay and why do we need to connect why we need this foreign key is because we don't need to have all these details in the report table right because if that happens then there is going to be duplicates right and we don't want duplicate data and to avoid that so you know this particular table always going to store the basic information of the students and this particular table is going to store the uh, marks of the students and using that foreign key we are going to access the basic information of the students okay so this is what it's all about and this is how the students are connected the tables are connected so basically what is if i talk about a j so how many uh, how I'm going to refer to the marks how much marks he has in English so that is the ID is 1 so that's ID 1 so in English he has 89 and in max he has 90 and similarly for Vijay he has 45 and 70 so this is how these two tables are connected so I hope now all the keys that is a primary key candidate key alternate key and the foreign key all these things are pretty clear to you so if any question has been asked to uh, regarding this you can easily now can answer and then children we are going to understand what is a ddl and dml commands so basically data definition language that is ddl so what is ddl commands language that is uh, so uh, data definition language actually consists of SQL commands so basically it's about commands that can be used to define the database schema so it simply deals with a description of the database schema and is used to create and modify the structure of the database concepts in the database what are the examples the example is when we create a table when we alter the table alter means we are going to add some more delete some columns from the table are going to add some columns okay so that is going to that is the alteration of the table or if we drop the table so when we drop the table even the data is going to get lost so these are the commands that comes under the ddl that is data definition language similarly if you talk about dml command a uh, data manipulation language is a computer programming language used for adding that is for inserting deleting modifying so when we work with the data when we you know do some modification of the data when we uh, you know generate some data from the tables right 
so that will be called as a data manipulation language and so the word data so when we do some manipulations some retrieval of data that will be data manipulation language and when we work with the structure of the table that will be called as a ddl that is data definition language and the command that we have is select normally we use the select command we have the insert we have delete now delete over here is going to only delete the records or a particular record or all the records so it is going to delete the data and not the table itself whereas the drop is going to actually drop the entire table it is going to delete the entire table including the data as well so this is going to drop the table delete the entire table so the table will no longer exist so if i use the delete that is going to delete if i delete all the records so all the data will be deleted but the structure the table is there so again i can feed some data into that table and that is the difference between drop and delete so even this question can be asked children so be very particular about it so you can answer it now so that's it children so this is about the theory part that we have for uh, today so hope uh, that uh, okay i'm going to give you this entire thing i'm going to export it to the pdf file and then you can have this pdf file for your reference and use it children that is uh, data model and i'm going to save this into my folder that is this one and that's it okay and in fact i did not save this powerpoint presentation so i'm going to save this as well so children this was the theory part and then tomorrow what we are going to do we are going to do some practicals and because that is what matters the most so this is the pdf file for you children okay it got generated pretty nicely and uh, let me just save this also to my pc and uh, that is over here okay and data model okay fine children so i'm just uh, giving this pdf file to you you can use it and then tomorrow let us do the practicals bye for now